So I have the uh, machine pretty far disassembled. I've had the carriage removed and the uh, input slider pipe that goes here also removed. Um, and with those out of the way, you can get a pretty good idea of the working of the mechanism here. So this shaft here is the main drive shaft. Um, the crank on the front plate is attached to a shaft that goes down here and has a bevel gear that meshes with this gear, which then drives this shaft all the way across. And then this shaft, each of these bevel gears drives a bevel gear on the inside of this, these Leibniz wheels here. So basically how this works is um, on the front plate, which would normally be right about here, you'll set one of these sliders to the number you want to enter. And what that does is on the back of those, there's little fingers you see. And those little fingers will be inside little grooves here on these wheels and will pull them to whatever position you set via the slider. So if I push this to say right about here, and then if I turn the crank, everything will rotate around. As you see, this is now meshing with the teeth on that position of the wheel. So I think that was seven, right? So by having the gear in that position, this should mesh, mesh with seven of the teeth. I think I might have a little bit high. I think it's catching the bottom of the eighth tooth. Let's tap this down just a little bit. So now, yeah, so now it's gonna mesh with seven of the teeth on the Leibniz wheel. Um, and so if I wanted to do nine, then I would, when I set the finger to nine, this would be all the way up here. Now it's going to mesh with nine of the teeth on the Leibniz wheel. And of course, all the other columns are set to zero. Uh, you can see the gears all the way down there, not meshing with anything. Uh, that's the basic principle of how you select and add a number. Um, pretty simple. And then the carry, carry works by these little trips here. So when the machine is in the correct time, of course, that would be after you've added in the first column. So we'll rotate this so that, or while you're adding in the first column, I should say. So while this Leibniz wheel would be meshing with the gear in the first column, this can trip and see it stays in that position. That's the carry trip. So if this wheel had rotated um, past nine to 10, or if I was doing subtraction, it had rotated backwards past zero to nine, this will, there's a little peg on the bottom of the digit wheel that will trip this. And now if I continue, notice there's this finger here that will push the next column forward one position. And if I keep going, oh, so I went around too many times, but you'll see that this also reset then. There's a, a cam on the bottom of that trip. Let me get this back too. So you can see when I push this down, this pushes on the lever, which has a cantilever or a pivot down in here, which is attached to a shift fork, which pulls this piece forward such that this peg will align with this gear. In the untripped position, this peg is pushed back so it misses the teeth of this gear and bypasses in this non-toothed section. Um, and like I said, then there's a, a, a cam on the bottom of that piece, so as it keeps rotating, uh, that once it's done with its carry, that cam will ride up on a pin and push this back to the untripped position. And what it's hitting in now is the uh, counter increment. So there's another finger, similar to these fingers, on this first drum, uh, because there is no carry input from this side, there's nothing over here. Instead of that finger being the carry, like it is on the rest of the drums, it's actually um, fixed to always engage, and that's the counter increment. So that finger will engage with one of the teeth here and push that forward one position. And um, the top side of this engages with the counter digit in that position to turn that one position forward uh, as that per cycle, as that finger passes by on the bottom. Um, Normally, these machines would have uh, kind of star-shaped pieces attached to each of these points for overshoot protection. Uh, you can see, like here, there's a cam. Here, there's a cam. Uh, and the cams are different timings on all the different Leibniz uh, cylinders. The idea being that 
once this is done with its adding, that cam will engage with a cutout in the star to block this from rotating any further. So that, you know, if you give this a, a quick crank and these gain some momentum, they might want to keep going even after they disengaged. Uh, because, the, you know, once, once this is out of the tooth section, you know, I can spin this as much as I want. There's nothing stopping me. So if these had gained some momentum, you know, they could, you know, go further than you'd intended and add uh, extra digits or extra numbers uh, than what you had entered. Like if I entered a five and this gained some momentum, it would actually result in adding a six because there's nothing to stop this from doing that. But what does, what, so what they did to stop that was they added those uh, star pieces in there. I think they call them a Maltese cross. And as soon as the tooth section of leaving this wheel has moved past the, uh, where it's no longer driving the shaft, that cam would have engaged with a cutout in the star so that this is blocked from turning any further. Um, and then once it stops, then this will keep going and the cam will disengage, but since it's already stopped, then it's fine. It's going to stay where it is. Um, and on this machine, uh, this does not have that. This was modified by tape um, to remove those and instead add these uh, springs here, which add some drag. So there's a little bit of drag on each of these uh, digit shafts and that's the uh, overshoot protection. I'm not exactly sure why that's a better system, or why Tate thought that was a better system than the interlocks with the star wheels, but um, that's what he did. So that's what we have. But anyway, um, normally they would have the overshoot protection here, but this particular machine doesn't modify to have it here with these pieces. Um, the only thing to point out really is this is your direction change. And all that this does is this will move the this carriage piece here, not really a carriage, but um, you can see that these are double bevel gears. So when it's in this position, the bottom half of the gear is pushed up to engage with the accumulator digit. However, when you push it down, now this piece disengages and this piece engages, and that just has the effect of even though you turn the crank handle the same way and the machine runs the same way, the accumulator is driven opposite directions. It's like when this shaft rotates this way, you can see that the accumulator digit would rotate this way. But if I engage it this way, now when this shaft rotates this way, the accumulator digit rotates the other way. Uh, so that's all that is. Um, and this has a little cutout here so that you can only change direction when the, the machine is uh, not in the middle of a cycle. So that's what the cutout is. As soon as you start a cycle, you can see, if you start this way, now you can't change direction. And only this would not be allowed to go backwards. Um, on the bottom of the top plate here, there's a ratchet, so the crank can only go one way. Um, I'm just tuning it backwards manually here for demonstration purposes. Uh, so, that's pretty much it. The only thing to mention is on the uh, back here, the carry trips. So you can see that these are held in place by little spring detents, which are these fingers right here. You can see that normally they pinch on the inside of those two holes, and then when you push it, they pop over and pinch on the outside, and that's just a little uh, detent to keep those either engaged or disengaged. Um, and that's pretty much it for how this works, really. Now you can see how this uh, direction change works. It's just a pivot lever, which then uh, has a, shaft, a rod that goes over here to pivot the shaft that runs all the way across the bottom, and then that shaft has pins on it, which you can see one of them here, so when that shaft on the bottom rotates, this pin will uh, push either direction. That's how that works. It's a pretty pretty basic machine, really. Uh, I think that pretty much accounts for, you know, all the operations going on here. Um, as far as the carriage, take a look at the carriage here. So this is the top of the carriage. And you don't really need to see the entire thing is pretty much the same, its whole length. You can just see that 
down here in this section, we've got the uh, counter, and then this is the accumulator up here, and then it just continues on. Uh, same idea. Uh, this crank is for clearing the counter, I think, and the other crank is for clearing the accumulator. Uh, the interesting part is on the bottom. Just flip this over so you can see here are the bevel gears that will engage with um, these bevel gears. So you can either engage with it, with it on the top side or the bottom side. And this I still have to fix this yet. One of the springs is uh, broken there. You can see it right there. That should be a detent spring. So these would be detent. But this one I still have to fix yet. Um, so anyway, these are the uh, accumulator engagement gears that engage with those bevel gears there. These little pins here, these diamond shaped things are the carry chips. Those are what will push on these fingers to trip the carry. Um, the accumulator or the counter uh, increment, which is this piece right here and this piece, no, just this piece right here. This piece right here will engage with the little uh, louvers there. You can kind of see. That's what will uh, increment the uh, counter. And then for clearing, you can see it just has these uh, tooth uh, shafts here, not really shafts, but tooth pieces here that when you turn the crank handle, if I don't drop it on the floor, they will drop down, you see how it's dropped down kind of, to engage with uh, teeth underneath these bevel teeth. And if I turn it back, see how it pops out, disengages? And those gear sections down there have one tooth missing at the zero position so when this engages it will drive it until it gets to where the tooth is missing which is when this wheel is at zero and then because the tooth is missing you can't drive it anymore so these all stop at zero and basically the same thing for the counter which you can actually see here the tooth is missing right there so when this shaft drops down to engage it will not move this wheel because it's already at zero and that's basically how that works so um, that pretty much covers really everything about how, how this machine works. Uh, I don't think I missed anything. Um, really, it's uh, pretty basic overall. Um, you can see these cutouts here. Those are what this piece will engage with. You can see it's got a pin on the back. So that um, just sets the carriage in, you know, locked into a particular position. Uh, that's all that, that is. So, and that's really all I've got, all I've got to say about this. Um, I said overall, it's a really pretty basic machine, um, and it's nice too because when you take it apart, you can pretty much see everything. You know, it's not like there's pieces hiding down somewhere. Really, pretty much everything is you know visible just by looking at it. So, I hope you enjoyed this video, and thank you for watching.